Howdy, I'm Gary, Dillon Precision's Human Manual. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up and adjust rifle dies in a Dillon RL550 machine. So first, one big thing about rifle cases, when you resize them, they must have case lube on them. If you take a case that is dry and run it up into the sizing die, I pretty much guarantee it will stick you will use up all of your profanity vocabulary fairly quickly, and then hopefully you'll read the manual and realize that we have a stuck case remover built into our sizing die before you disassemble it. So first thing you wanna do is we're gonna take our cases. I'm lazy, I love the Dillon spray-on case lube. Throw them into a cardboard box, one layer deep, spritz on light coat, Shake the cases to roll them around. Spray on another light coat. And then it takes about 10 minutes for the alcohol carrier to evaporate. Our case lube is primarily built on anhydrous lanolin, so it does have to be removed from the cartridges before you shoot the ammo. If you shoot lubed cases in your firearm, the case wall fails to adhere to the chamber walls and you increase the breech face pressure so it acts like it's an overloaded cartridge even when it's not. The friction of the case sticking to the chamber wall at the moment of firing helps keep pressure spread out evenly. So you can either wipe the lube off laboriously with a paper towel or do like us, wait for the ammo to be loaded, throw it into your vibratory cleaner with plain corn cob, add a couple of tablespoons of alcohol, and run it for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then separate it. It doesn't hurt the powder, doesn't hurt the primer, doesn't hurt the bullet, cleans off the case so you can shoot it quickly. Now that we've got some lube brass available, we can start to adjust the dies, but I wanna explain how a rifle sizing die works. You have a fired piece of brass. The bullet will slip into the neck. That's because it's fired, it's larger than the bullet diameter. Same way with the depriming assembly. The decapping assembly will just slide through. Because the idea, when the case is sized in the die, the neck portion of the case is oversized. And this carbide expander ball being pulled out through the neck opens up the case neck to a uniform inside diameter, but it still will be too tight for the bullet to just fall through, because you gotta have the bullet held in place. The crimp is not what holds the bullet in place on a loaded cartridge, it's neck tension from being resized. So, on a Dillon sized die, there's a clip and a jam nut, so your decapping assembly is basically pre-adjusted. You just screw it down till everything stops. You can see about 3 eighths of an inch or so of decapping pin is protruding beyond the end of the die. Now when you want to adjust this, start, pull the handle down so the shell plate is elevated. With your fingers, screw the die down until it stops on top of the shell plate. That's just a starting point. That is not where you will leave it. Okay, we're now touching the shell plate. So lift the handle up. Let's take a piece of brass, slide it in. Okay, case is sized and deprimed now. So the next step is we're gonna wipe the lube off of this case and we're gonna check it in a headspace case gauge. What the headspace case gauge is, is a carefully machined chamber. There's a little step machined here that's seven thousandths down. So when you drop a case in here, if it's flush with the bottom step, that's minimum headspace. That's typically where factory ammunition is size two. So it'll factory ammo will drop in flush with that bottom step. The top step is maximum headspace, meaning anything that's any longer than that absolutely will not fit your chamber. If you're shooting a semi-automatic or a select fire firearm, 
you want the sized lube free case to drop in flush with that step. Okay, so let's wipe the lube off first because that thin film of lube will make a difference in measuring headspace. It's that precise and that critical. So drop this in and we are right actually where we want to be. So we are flush with the bottom step. So headspace is good, die is properly set. Now we need to lock it in place. So to do that, you always tighten the lock ring under a load. So let's pull the handle down. Now with the case up in the die, tighten the die lock ring. Because when you're doing that, you're putting the same upward pressure on the tool head in the machine as it will have when it's actually reloading. So let's tighten that lock ring up pretty snug. Not quite like a small block Chevy, but say, a, say an old Ford. Alrighty. And yes, 308 cases do require more pressure pretty much than any other case to size. Okay, next we're going to adjust the powder die. Now the powder die is just to activate the powder measure. It's a matter of adjusting the height so that when the handle is all the way down, the case activates the measure to push the bar all the way over. Alrighty, now on bottleneck rifle cases, you generally do not flare the case mouth. And that has a female shaped powder funnel. The case goes up into it. The neck and shoulder is what pushes on the die to activate the powder measure. However, if you're shooting a coated bullet or a cast lead bullet, you may want to flare it like say for 30-30 and this funnel goes in and it'll actually step this out and flare it like you would for a handgun. But generally for rifle stuff, all you're going to do is chamfer the case mouth. This is an Ellie Wilson tool. It's double-ended. The pointy end goes inside the mouth and basically it's going to trim away just a little bit of the brass casing to deburr it and bevel it slightly. And then you do the same thing on the outside Again, you're just getting rid of any burr because you'll have to trim rifle brass every two to three firings. And when you do that, it'll leave a sharp score edge and you just want to break that edge a little. So that then when you go to set a boat tail bullet in, it just sits there just fine. So now, since we're loading 308 with a match bullet, we're going to use the B powder funnel. And we're just going to, the lock rings loose. We're just going to finger tighten this on here. Lift out the little brass locator pin. We're gonna slide this case into the shell plate. Hold everything in. Okay, notice the powder bar is not all the way over. So, we're going to loosen that. Turn that die down. Yeah, turn and a half and check it again. And this is just trial and error to keep turning the die down slowly until you get the powder bar to go all the way over. If you push the powder bar over too far, you're gonna end up bulging out the case at the shoulder because it's just putting too much pressure on it. Alrighty, handles all the way down the same time the powder bar is all the way over. So again, leave the case up in the die. Tighten the die lock ring. Powder measure lined up with the fail safe rod. Snug these two screws. So for our purposes, we're gonna attach that. And when we pull the handle forward, like we're seating a primer, you're gonna tighten up that blue wing nut until that coil spring above it is partially compressed. You should still be able to slip a credit card between these coils with the handle held forward. See that little bit of movement? Means you're not gonna damage the rod or the powder measure by overpressuring that linkage. Next, we've gotta put in the bullet seating die. Now, just a word here. Uh, no two bullets are created the same 
Therefore, no two overall cartridge lengths will ever be the same. The easy way to check that is if you take the seeding stem out of the die, set a bullet on it, and zero. So we're going to measure from the base of the bullet to the end of the bullet seeding stem. You'll see that measures 2.161. So that's with projectile number one. Now, grabbing a projectile randomly, we're gonna measure this one. Now these are match bullets. They're great bullets, they're made by Sierra. And this one is 2.162. This one is 2.161. So because the bullet seating stem doesn't touch the nose of the bullet, it touches the bullet at a specific diameter on the bullet body. That's why you get these minor variations in overall length. Anything under about five thousandths with match bullets is irrelevant. And because these are Sierra bullets, you can see out of three, we're only getting one thousandth variation. They're damn fine. Okay, so to start adjusting, we're going to cheat. So size piece of brass, put it into the shell plate, put it at the bullet seating station. Pull the handle down, let go of the handle. Take just the seating die body. With your fingers, screw this die body down until it stops on the case. Okay, we've stopped. Now back it up about one eighth of a turn just so that you're not hitting the top of the case and mouth on the inside of the die. Now, lift the handle up. Let's set our bullet on there. Pull the handle down. Screw in our bullet seating stem. So we've started seating the bullet in. Uh, check your dimensions. Right now it's at 2.736 inches. Uh, that's a little longer than what we're shooting for on this cartridge. Your loading manual will generally have two different dimensions. At the front of the page and in introducing the cartridge, you'll generally have an SAAMI drawing showing the maximum cartridge dimensions, meaning anything bigger than that won't fit in the chamber of the firearm. Secondly, if you look under that specific bullet weight and shape, you'll find a recommended overall cartridge length for that specific profile. Now, the other thing you want to do when you're fine tuning this, have a fired lubed piece of brass in station one to give the same upward pressure on the tool head as you'll have when you're actually reloading. Because otherwise, the tool head itself has about four or five thousandths worth of float. Doing it this way, under a load, centers the tool head in the frame of the machine and centers the die and the threads of the tool head, giving you an extremely precise centered bullet seat. Okay, we are now at 2.715 inches. We're gonna to try to get down to 2.700, so we need to turn that seat die down just a little bit more. Turn it down about one quarter turn. Case is back in the shell plate. And we're at 2.697 inches. So we're within three thousandths of what we're going for. That's close enough. So put that case with the bullet in it back in, pull the handle down, and with the handle down, tighten the lock ring on the die body first, then tighten the lock ring on the bullet seating stem. The final die we have to set is our crimp die. Now there's two different styles of crimps. There's the taper crimp, which essentially is resizing the neck of the case after the bullet has been seated into it. All that's going to do is squeeze the case mouth snugly against the side of the bullet. The other type of crimp is called a roll crimp. Now the taper crimp is predominantly for bolt actions, semi-automatics. Uh, in fact, if you're shooting a match bullet like this, it's generally not recommended that you crimp at all. Uh, the reason for that is that these jackets are very precise, and if you over crimp it, you'll end up squeezing and deforming microscopically 
the bullet diameter. You're going to be essentially resizing the bullet inside the case mouth, which has a bad effect on accuracy. Uh, for semi-auto, a light crimp is, is adequate. Military ammo you know, will have what's called a cantilever. Looks like a dotted line around the bullet, and that's crimped into. Plated bullet cartridge has a groove that's crimped into with a, more of a roll crimp, say for a tubular magazine like a 3030 Winchester. To adjust this for our 308, pull out our little brass locator pin, pull out this die case for the moment, and let's grab the piece of sized brass, put it into the shell plate, pull the handle down. With your fingers, screw the die down until it stops on the case mouth. Now you'll notice we're doing this with just an empty piece of brass. That's because that's going to actually get us really, really close to the final dimension where we want to be with a loaded cartridge. So die is stopped, so lift it up. Now let's substitute our cartridge with the bullet seated in it. So right now at the case mouth we measure 0.334. So we only need to crimp this about another thousandth or two at the very most because we're going to be shooting this out of an M1A. So let's put this back in. Let's turn that die down a quarter turn. Dies are generally threaded at 14 threads per inch. So one full rotation or one thread in a die will move the die up or down 70 thousandths of an inch. So by turning it down a quarter turn, we're moving that die down maybe 17, 18 thousandths is all. So let's size run that crimp we're at like 0.332 which is right where we want to be okay so we're we're happy with our adjustment on our crimp die so again let's run that case back in put our lube case in and once again we're going to tighten the die lock ring with that case up in the die Ta-da! Our die set is set up, adjusted, we are ready to transform perfectly good, clean, empty brass into loaded cartridges. You see, it's really not difficult to adjust a set of bottleneck rifle dies. Just takes having the right preparation, the right pieces of equipment, and knowing that you always have a friend at the factory at Dillon Precision. So if you have any questions, need any assistance, you're unsure of something, pick up the phone and call us. 800 223-4570. Additionally, we have lots of other videos on our website, dillonprecision.com. <laughs>